Hey, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, and today we're going to talk about the plasma cell membrane as part of our series of cell biology. Make sure to check out all of our other medical-related videos at our YouTube channel, iMedical School, and our website at www.imedicalschool.org. All right, let's begin by talking about the plasma cell membrane. The plasma cell membrane is one of the most important components of the cell. The plasma membrane plays a vital role in acting as a selective barrier for the cell. The plasma cell membrane regulates what enters and what exits the cell. In addition, it plays a vital role in signaling and interacting with other cells and its surroundings via various proteins and receptors that are embedded in the membrane. As a result of its diverse functions, the plasma membrane is composed of a variety of components with phospholipids, proteins, and fats composing a large role of the plasma cell membrane. The cell membrane is composed of a bilayer of phospholipids oriented in opposite directions. The phospholipid bilayer contains cholesterol deposits, proteins, and carbohydrates as part of the mosaic that makes up the cell membrane. In fact, 55% of the plasma membrane is composed of proteins, 25% phospholipids, 13% cholesterol, 4% other lipids, and 3% carbohydrates. To understand the structure and unique properties of the plasma membrane, we need to understand the basic components of the membrane, which is the phospholipid. The phospholipid has a unique structure and thereby unique properties that are vital to the formation of the plasma cell membrane. A phospholipid is composed of a glycerol head with two fatty acid tails. The glycerol phosphate head is hydrophilic, meaning water-loving, while the fatty acid tail are hydrophobic or water-fearing. These properties are conveyed to the plasma cell membrane as well. The plasma cell membrane is a bilayer of phospholipids, meaning there are two layers of phospholipids present. The hydrophilic heads point to the water-filled extracellular space and the cytosol-filled intracellular space. The hydrophobic tails point to each other, excluding water from within the cell membrane. You may ask, why does this orientation develop? Think about oil droplets in water. Oil is hydrophobic. When oil is placed in water, the oil droplets float on the surface in a layer and coalesce together. Hydrophobic molecules are attracted to other hydrophobic molecules, so the fatty acids orient away from the water-filled extracellular and intracellular spaces and try to stay close to the fatty acid tails or other phospholipids. Due to the phospholipid bilayer membrane, water-soluble molecules are unable to penetrate the membrane on their own, while fat-soluble molecules can easily penetrate the membrane. We see this physiologically where many fat-soluble hormones penetrate through the membrane with ease to affect intracellular processes. In addition to phospholipids playing a large role in the function of the plasma membrane, there are other components that we previously discussed that play a role. For example, cholesterol dissolves in the plasma membrane and provides fluidity to the membrane. I like to think of the membrane as a water in the ocean, as a plasma membrane is constantly moving. Another component of the plasma membrane are proteins. There are two types of proteins that are called integral membrane proteins and peripheral proteins. Integral proteins extend through the entire membrane, while peripheral proteins remain on the intracellular or extracellular surfaces of the lipid bilayer. Integral proteins act as pores or transporters that allow hydrophilic or water-soluble substances to pass through the lipid bilayer. In addition, these integral proteins can also act as receptors. Finally, peripheral proteins act as enzymes that play a role in regulating transport of water-soluble products. In addition to proteins, carbohydrates play an important role for the cell membrane. Carbohydrates combine with proteins and lipids to create glycoproteins and glycolipids, respectively. These proteins dangle on the outside of the membrane and appear like a fur coat on the membrane. This fur coat is termed the glycolax. These carbohydrates play several roles. First, they are negatively charged and cause the entire membrane to have a net negative charge. This charge repels other negatively charged molecules. In addition, these carbohydrates can act as attachments to other cells. 
Finally, this glycolax layer can act as receptors which trigger activation of integral proteins and can cause an intracellular cascade. It is like knocking over the first domino in a long line of dominoes. The plasma cell membrane and all of its components play a vital role in cell function by acting as a barrier but also through its components helping with interaction with the cell's surroundings. Well that was a brief review of the cell membrane. I hope you liked this video and if you did give it a like. Please share this video with your friends and classmates. Place any comments down below and most importantly subscribe. This is Dr. K and I'll see you next time.